A very good evening to you. Welcome uh, to the FKF PL Review Show. My name is uh, Robinson Okenye. Tonight, it's all about uh, March week 12. 25 goals were scored from the eight matches that were played. With Tasca getting a 4-1 win against Poster Rangers being one of the high-scoring matches of March week 12. In studio with me is none other than Cedric Musumba. Good evening, Cedric. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Robinson. How are you doing? Today you don't seem to, you you seem not to have the energy that you always elucidate on this show. No, the energy is there. It's only that uh, we are trying to see how the league will shape as we try to walk through it and maybe make it a bit more uh, fireworks to those people who expect it to be. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are heading at the middle of the league and we can see how it's getting defined itself. Mm -hmm. Those who, uh, the teams that uh, really define their league too early, yes. they are trying to work as much as they can, they can to run away with it. Mm -hmm. And those that didn't really uh, define it and they think that maybe they will be defining at the middle of the league, it will be maybe too late for them to discover. Mm -hmm. Also on uh, tonight's show is uh, Rogers Eshtemi. Good evening, Rogers. Welcome to the show. Good to have you here on uh, this show. Did you enjoy match week 12? Absolutely full of upsets. Nobody expected those results to happen, but that is football. And uh, I, I'm, I, I'm just surprised you have said, oh, why is not in his moods? Definitely the answer is there. <laughs> so I, I don't know how to dig deeply into it. I think the viewers will enjoy the show as it goes on. <laughs> well, of course, it's going to be an interesting one. That is for March uh, week 12. Remember, we'll be speaking to Zoya Sugar, head coach, and that is Ibrahim Shikanda. He will be telling us how the season has been for them. Tomorrow, they play... Uh, that is the league leaders, Tasca FC. So what should, we ex what should we expect from Zoya Sugar? And remember, Zoya has been one of the teams that has created some of the best players that we have in Kenya when you talk about football. But before we get to Shikanda, let's uh, begin by taking a look at uh, some of the highlights that we had from the weekend. Let's begin with the team that uh, we thought could uh, actually be pacing uh, Tasca at the moment. Who am I talking about? KCB, the bankers lost to Zoya Sugar. 2 1 was the final score. And Cedric, let me begin with you. Did you expect such a, res a result? Not necessarily me alone, but I think the pundits all over there, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have told, as in, uh, scripted this result really coming. Mm -hmm. And to the essence that the kind of soccer that KCB has been playing since the inception of this particular league, it has been so convincing to an essence that many people would actually put a bet on them. And they knew very well that the KCB meeting in Zoya Sugar, it was to some extent a walk in the park, which was not necessarily the thing. But and again, the likes of uh, this in Zoya, in Zoya that we are talking about, you have just mentioned of a team that has been feeding uh, the best player that we currently celebrate in the league. And to mention a few, they are playing in the one of the top most te uh, teams that we can really uh, highlight in this particular league. It's a team that has been picking a match after match. And I think they have been trying to define themselves and see how they can start now bringing down the, the so-called elephants of this league. And mentioning this elephant is the kind of the result that they registered against KCB. And also, it's the beauty of the league. Because we don't want to see a league that has got discrepancies, whereby you see a very big margin between the leading pack and the chasing pack. We need a league whereby it's refer, and if it's defined by many, a league that it's so... Uh, too many like calling it competitive to an essence that if a team loses as in uh, loses one match it can as well as drop to bottom to bottom five that that, that tells you a league that has a team that can know each and every team that can really challenge for the league and this is what we are looking for currently as we speak Tasca is really defining the path and Tasca is really opening up the gap which shouldn't be the, be the case. But the likes of Inzoya being in this particular league, they are trying to slow down those teams that would have started running away and waiting that particular gap. And they try also welcoming other teams that might have been started slowly, but they are ready to recollect themselves and maybe trying to convincingly tell, uh, tell the rest that we are not just there to be counted, but also we are there 
to chase for this particular league and maybe at the end of it be celebrated as the champion. And by that I mean the, I mentioned the likes of uh, Gorma here who uh, I think they will be coming back, backing, coming back with a force now that they have got nothing, no any other avenue to chase for. Mm -hmm. They will be now focusing to uh, FKF, FKFPL. Yes. I'm talking about the likes of uh, uh, FC Leopard. Mm -hmm. I'm also talking about the likes of Wazito, who, who, who are not being yet counted into this particular league, but going by the result, mm -hmm. they are there to be counted. Yes, Ishtemi, from what Cedric has said, that it's that, uh, you know, so far, after the 12 rounds, you cannot take any game for granted. Actually, this is the moment whereby we are trying to separate pretenders from serious title contenders as well as those teams likely to face to be relegated at the end of the season. It's now upon those teams who are showing those intention maybe to win the title or the contest for the title to try their best not to slip up at this moment. And it's unfortunate. At uh, KCB did it in, at Sudi Stadium over the weekend. But this is something maybe some of us had forecasted because KCB are always that team that starts off the season very well, strongly, but as the season progresses, they try to fade away. So, and uh, during that game, it's when we saw the importance of a player like uh, Michael Mutinda. Once he was recorded, that is when KCB totally uh, crumbled and there was no chance for them to come back into that game. So, we actually, it was sad for Mutinda to be sent off, but then that's the nature of football. Once you are not disciplined enough in your, uh, to help your team, once you get out, then the result will go against your side. So there it is, and I believe now it is upon uh, uh, Zico and his boys maybe to go back to the drawing board and try to reflect on what exactly they want to achieve this season. Because many people think that this could be the best season for, KC, uh, for KCB, but from how things are panning out at the moment, then it is theirs to, it's, they have to blame themselves because now they have... There are like, I think, four points behind Tasca who are not taking any chances in any matches they are coming, coming across them. And also, yes, Ruby, yes, yes, if yes, you yes, allow yes. me just to add on what Rogers has said, mm -hmm. I think the level of uh, composure and experience should also be start playing out in this particular team, more so the likes of KCB. Mm -hmm. Remember, KCB is a team that is mad by young lads who actually should be uh, surrounded and oiled by the likes of experienced player, and I'm talking about the likes of Dennis Odiambo, who are in this particular team, mm -hmm. to start actually t I mean, t showing these young lads on how to manage a game. For instance, if a game is too tight, you don't just open it up to the essence that you want to score. Not every game is meant to win. Where you see that a win is not really coming, you can as well as manage that particular game and come out of that game with a point. For instance, a game for Inzoya, we have seen Inzoya actually playing very good game. In Zoya, they have been trying to make as many chances as they can. The only thing that they have been unlucky enough to hit the target. And if they start hitting the, the target to, uh, the likes of, against the likes of KCB, I think they will now start developing the winning mentality. And if that mentality comes, it will give them an urge of even pushing it harder. But for the likes of KCB who are at the park, sometimes when you are at the park and you are being chased by some of the uh, team behind you, there's that pressure that started actually sucking you up. And I think that pressure might have started sucking them up if they cannot really contain that given pressure, the likes of what Tasca is doing, and maybe contain it to an essence that they know really what they want in that part, in each and every match they are facing. Even if you are facing a team that is being perceived as a, a smaller team in, in the league, you don't just give it as if you, it's an obvious way, as in obvious, obvious a win match. You give it as if you are facing the big gangs of that particular league. And I think to the essence that KCB was playing in Zoya when they were on top of the league, might have played around, as in, around their psychology, to the essence that even the likes of Mutinda, uh, Rogers has just mentioned, started picking yellow card. Where does that indiscipline coming in from? Mm -hmm. It's an element of indiscipline that, if allowed to come and start cropping some of your key players, yes. will actually make you know to deliver or achieve the goals that you are chasing in, this, in a league like ours. And uh -huh. in, ad in addition to that, Rebe, I think yes, also, yes, yes. also have to admit to the fact that uh, Sudi Stadium has always been a tough funding ground for most of these Nairobi-based teams. Another fact is that Zoya has always produced best players, and those players coming from those rural areas always give their best whenever they face teams from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe in the next few weeks or other months, you'll see more casualties at Saudi, at Saudi Stadium. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, let me interrupt you for a bit. And uh, there's uh, some uh, sad news reaching our newsroom is that uh, Juja, member of parliament, uh, that is uh, Francis Munua, is uh, dead. He's been uh, battling 
brain cancer since 2018 and friends and family have taken to social media to pass their condolences. That is a news reaching a newsroom is that a Juja member of parliament, Francis Munua, is dead. He's been suffering from brain cancer since 2018 and friends and family have taken to social media to pass their condolences. So um, let's uh, continue with uh, the FKFPL review show. And uh, we are taking stock of the games uh, that were played over March uh, week uh, 12 over the weekend. And uh, we have taken stock of what transpired between Zoya Sugar and uh, KCB. Of course, uh, the Millers getting a 2-1 win against uh, the Bankers. And right now is back uh, to the drawing board for the Bankers to make sure that uh, they cut the gap between them and uh, the league leaders, Tasca. But let's still stay in uh, the western part of Kenya. There was a team that was in action from Nairobi and that was Kariobangi Sharks. They managed to get a 1-0 win against Vihiga United. The goal coming courtesy of none other than the, Kenya Pre uh, rather the Football Kenya Federation Premier League top scorer, Eric Kapaito. Gentlemen, let me bring you into this. Eric, we watched this, the highlights to this uh, tie, and there was lots of talking points. Cedric. Vihiga United, just mm -hmm. as uh, Zoya Sugar, uh, Bidco United, mm -hmm. and even Madari, that yes. seem to be struggling. Actually, if you go uh, analyze their match by match, mm -hmm. you will tell that this team are not really struggling. It's just uh, a fact that they are not really picking up their chances, mm -hmm. and they are not hitting the target when they are needed to. Mm -hmm. And remember, in a game of soccer, if you can't take your chance, if you can't hit the target, a one chance from the opponent will punish you and you leave you to regret. This is what has actually been happening to Vihiga United. You see, we are not really convinced that Vihiga United is losing to the fact that they won against Gorma here. It will be so a sad story to uh, Vihiga United supporters mm -hmm. if you are being narrated to or you are being told to that uh, Vihiga United is a team that has gone down to relegation after winning against Gorma mm here. -hmm. You know, it's a bad history to write. Mm -hmm. And I think to Vihiga United, they just need to recollect up this themselves. Mm -hmm. They just need to have the believability. Yes. All the intricate and the formula and the philosophy of soccer that they are really trying to show us mm -hmm. is what is really playing out in each of every team that has been winning. Mm -hmm. There is no any other game that you can go ahead, create several chances, mm -hmm. and you come out as a loser. Yes. I wonder why you are creating those chances. Mm -hmm. For instance, this game when you are, there are many chances that Vihiga United created against Karibangi Sharks. Yes. But you see, Karibangi Sharks and uh, through Kapaito, mm -hmm. they only got a few chances like one to two, mm -hmm. which punished them. Which They are not clinical in front of goals. That tells you that when they are in front of goals, they are either in a hurry of hitting the, hitting the ball, mm -hmm. they lack that composure, and they lack that strength and focus that really gives them the capacity of putting that ball behind the, behind the net. Mm -hmm. They just need to relax, they just need to soak in that pressure, and try to hit the target when they are required to do so. Cedric, Vihiga missed a penalty, penalty in that tie. What do you make of Brandon's heroics in this game for Sharks, his heroics in that game? It's a credit, a credit given to him to the fact that now uh, uh, Buire was actually watching him from the bench. Mm -hmm. And those are the facts that I've, I've, I've always talked about, that when given a chance yes. and uh, you outshine the, uh, uh, actually the king, you will, might end up actually being crowned as a king. Mm -hmm. And I think moving forward now that Buire was actually from the bench, I don't think if Mulia will again give uh, an easier chance to Brian Ibuire. Mm -hmm. I think Brandon will actually earmark that particular space until the time maybe he will make a mistake. And a mistake that is really punishable. Not just a mistake that is an obvious mistake that we know. Mm -hmm. But to the fact, I can also say, given credit to him, I can also discredit the composure and the focus, the kind of uh, uh, vehicle as a team it had actually. Mm -hmm. For instance, we know very well set pieces are earmarked with certain players. Yes. I don't know if and I don't want actually to castigate any given uh, player in this particular team. Yes. But a penalty giving it away to a goalkeeper, it's as, as, as well as committing suicide to that particular team. Mm -hmm. And remember, you are giving away a penalty at a time when all other 10 players are focusing on you. Yes. I don't think if Vihiga were prepared to take this kind of penalty, 
I don't think if Vihiga they had he marked their best penalty taker into this particular scenario. But all Dan had said, I think Brandon actually lived to the mark that he deserve more playing chances in Karobangi Sharks. Yes, uh, Shtemi, when you take a look at uh, the highlights from that tie, of course, uh, Vihiga, you know, wasting a lot of chances. But when on the other side, on the flip side, that is, for Karyobangi Sharks, it was, you know, give Kapaito a chance and he shows you how to shake the net. You know, it's not actually most of these matches, uh, the results are not the true reflection of the matches or rather how that the matches panned out. Mm -hmm. But for, for you, if you don't take your chances, just like Cedric has said, yes. you'll be punished. And playing against a team with players like Kapaito, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Saru, uh, Kapaito, uh, Mazembe, and then you miss a penalty in the first half, actually that penalty could have been the turning point of that game. Mm -hmm. If Viga could have scored it, then it would have been so difficult for Karubang Sharks to get back into the game. But unfortunately for them, they missed the penalty, and there it was. Then defensive blunder allowed uh, Kapaita in his best position. He made no mistake, and that was the end of the game for, 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 for the host. So it, for Viga, they just need to at least try to go back to the basics, because penalties is not something to gamble with. Give somebody you trust with that penalty, because it is either a do or die. He will win for your match, or he'll send you to the relegation. So they are not in a good position. So they shouldn't be taking, wasting their chances, like that. more so at home. Let teams coming from Nairobi, traveling all those kilometers to Western, mm -hmm. let them bear the, 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 let them experience, yeah, that toughness of getting three points from those teams. But if they, if they are easily giving away those, those matches or rather those three points, then it's going to be so difficult for them to retain their status come at the end of the season. Remember, Vihiga are placed 15th on the log with nine points from 12 matches played. Cedric, before we move on to the next talking point tonight, we had almost three one-on-one -on -one chances with the keeper from Vihiga players, but none managed to convert that. What do you say over the attacking bluntness of this side? I think it's all about how focused their strikers are. Mm -hmm. Also, their uh, notion of panic might have actually uh, caught them by edge to the fact that they have been losing. Mm -hmm. And you see, there's a very big differences between a winning team that has grown their mentality towards winning mm -hmm. and a losing team that is deepening their mentality towards losing. To the mm -hmm. fact that when gotten a chance, you always think that if you don't score, if you don't hurry up to score it, yes. you will be blamed. Mm -hmm. And I think this is actually what is now working out in the Vihiga team. They have been losing, it's a losing streak that if they get a chance, everyone yes. is in a hurry to put that particular chance behind the net. Yes. I remember when just the ball started, Vihiga, they got an, a very open chance to an ex instance, even you could see mm -hmm. their striker almost blaming each other. Mm -hmm. To understand that they were in a very open, uh, was in open space to dispute those balls and even place, very, uh, place easily mm -hmm. behind the net. But that could not come simply because whoever was with that particular ball at that particular moment yes. was actually focusing to putting it behind it without bearing in mind that mm -hmm. he's playing with other team members who if he could have picked them then he could have scored it easily mm -hmm. it's a kind of management that i think the technical bench need to uh, take it easy yes take their player actually off the pitch and now this is now a class work rate mm -hmm. it's not all about the physicality and the, the technique that you apply on the field it's all about the psychological, uh, uh, psycho psychological uh, settlement yes. as in up, 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 upon, upon you approaching any given match. Yes. Remember, yes. when you are, uh, Vihiga is approaching a team that has been register registering positive results, mm -hmm. it's when all this comes in. Yes. We saw them playing against Gormahia. Mm -hmm. Vihiga created as well many chances that would have punished Gormahia if they, were, if they could have been clinical. Mm -hmm. They would actually come out of that particular match with either three goals. Mm -hmm. But that was not really coming simply because they were in a hurry to score. Yes. And at the moment you are in a hurry to score, either you will balloon that ball mm -hmm. or you will end up even flopping that ball in the front of goals. Yes. And they have, it's not that they don't have good strikers. Who have this like oh, David, uh, David Sibiu? Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a player good on ball. He makes nice runs. He knows how to distribute those balls. Yes. And I think if he can just focus and concentrate and relax a bit, he will start hitting the target. He, it, only, it will only take him a one goal to make him one of the 
challenging strikers in this particular league. Mm -hmm. Robbie, Robbie, I think I also have to add on what uh, on what on what said. Sedica said, said yes, yes. Actually, I think from from how things are, yes. Riga is lacking individual brilliance. Whereby mm -hmm. somebody who can take the balls by its own, somebody who can take this chance and say, "It is my ball. It's my duty. Let me just uh, carry my team on my shoulders mm -hmm. and score goals." So yes. it is that composure and maybe sometimes. Football is about luck, mostly for striker. You can maybe give a try by shooting, by luck, it goes into the back of the net. Unfortunately, sometimes it goes also the, the out of target. Mm -hmm. So they should take those chances. Let, let me just give a try. Because at the end of the day, it is your duty to shoot those balls. So mm -hmm. shoot them. Let them go in, in the net or off target. Well, uh, Shtemi is speaking about, uh, you know, converting goals. Now let's uh, talk uh, about... Uh, Kakamega Homeboys taking on Western Steamer and Alan Wanga scored a stoppage a time winner to ensure that Kakamega Homeboys grabbed the maximum points in the tie that they were facing Western Steamer match that ended 3-2. Eshtemi, did you see this tie going this way? <laughs> Actually, that is that's the derby. It is mm -hmm. a Western derby. Yes. And uh, whenever these two teams meet, expects it to be explosive. And I'm happy to see a uh, veteran player coming off the bench and winning it for Nicolas Muyoti and his, uh, and his team. Yes. I think uh, it was somehow lucky because... Steamer had already had already had already they were made it, actually the game. Yeah, they had already made it difficult for homeboys when mm -hmm. they went to the break leading two one and maybe in the last like maybe like uh, I think ten minutes or so, mm -hmm. that is how the score line was changed after a rot and uh, Wanga came into the pitch. Mm -hmm. A rot brought uh, brought uh, homeboys back into the game mm -hmm. after scoring the equalizer and after that Wanga was set free into the box and he used his experience to bury the ball into the net. Even seeing him, how he celebrated, mm -hmm. he reminds me his days at FC Leopards. Uh, the guy who just enjoys scoring goals and making players around him also enjoy playing, uh, playing, the, playing the soccer. So for homeboys, I think they got it right and uh, somehow Muyoti should be a happy man on how his substitution won the game for him. Mm -hmm. Cedric, when you take a look at those highlights, uh, there's something that comes out uh, clearly. You know, all the, def all the defense for, for both teams was lacking. Western, Western Steamer, I cannot actually uh, castigate them uh, so much mm -hmm. to the essence that it's a team that actually has offloaded 14 players. Mm -hmm and is trying actually to uh, load some players and try actually to make them work as a, a team yes. or a unit, yes. which is quite difficult uh, at the middle of, uh, let's say, the park where the team has now reached. Mm -hmm. I think it will lead sometimes, and given by how they played against Kakamega Homeboys, which has not dropped in a player, yes. which has been together for a long period of time, mm -hmm. I think it's a team that it's promising. Remember, they were leading at some extent, mm -hmm. and by that, it's a team that if well given that much time that it requires yes. with some uh, not tightened here and there, yes. it's a team that will start giving us a challenge of the Western steamer that we used to watch before. Mm -hmm. Remember, it has been a strong team. Also, just like in Zoya, feeding, uh, feeding out uh, big guns in this particular league of ours with some good players. Mm -hmm. And it's a team that needs to go back to where it was, mm -hmm. given by how it has been playing. But I will only pick one thing from uh, this particular Western team. Uh, yes, Western Steamer. Uh, West, Western Steamer team. Yes. To the fact that they cannot manage to protect their lead, mm -hmm. it is actually not really convincing. Because mm -hmm. sometimes a game is all about how you manage it. Once you are ahead, and some, you can widen your lead, mm -hmm. or when the lead is not really coming, mm -hmm. you try to manage. And how do you manage this particular lead? We, you go world over world class coaches or managers will always tell you that if you're leading a pack with two goals, mm -hmm. you need to possess a lot. Mm -hmm. By the so possessing, you run down the clock, mm -hmm. and by running down the clock, the game will come at the end by the lead. Mm -hmm. Or if you cannot possess much, yes. start now attacking. Yes. Of which I saw them attacking to some ex yes. to some instance, but their attacking started fading away as the game. Uh, uh, proce proceeded, yes. which means it's a team that has not worked on their game management. They mm -hmm. need to work on their game management yes. and try to be so composed knowing that we are now controlling this particular game and we want to win. Mm -hmm. 
we want to win. Of course, those are the words of Cedric Musumba talking about uh, the tie between uh, Kakamega Homeboys and Western Steamer. A tie that uh, saw Kakamega Homeboys uh, get the bragging rights. 3-2 was uh, the final score. Now, let's say jump ship. Let's move uh, to Mombasa. And Bandari got a 2-1 win against uh, FC Leopards. A tie that was played at the Mbaraki Stadium. Shtemi, let me begin with you before getting to Cedric. I know this uh, has some pinch to know to, to, to him. Let me begin with you, Eshtemi. <laughs> two goals in eight minutes. William Wadri scored two goals in eight minutes. And uh, that is how FC Leopards lost this game. I sympathize uh, Steve Ayo on the last show. Mm -hmm. Today, I pity my friend Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the type of results, actually. Patrick Osem and, uh, actually wanted to have mm -hmm. on his debut in the league. Yes. Uh, but uh, defensive frailties at the den were finally exposed mm -hmm. and the casualty the main casualty is no other than uh, the captain himself robinson kamura mm -hmm. he gifted what those two goals mm -hmm. because in a good day yeah kamura can't allow such goals to to go past the the goalkeeper mm -hmm. he has the duty to ensure the opposing player doesn't come closer to the to the six-yard box mm -hmm. but he made it so easy for 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 Wadri, mm -hmm. and you know Wadri has been converted actually into a striking role by the the new coach mm -hmm. Kasambungo, who has yes. a lot of confidence in them. Mm -hmm. And once you give such a ball player, because he's very comfortable on the ball mm -hmm. in each and every position, he can use both foot. So him, he got the room to play around the F sloper defenders and. Kamura didn't do the job. Mm -hmm. He was so lazy. He couldn't make those tackles. And by the time they were conceding the second goal, I think the body language had already just shown that F. Slopards were not prepared for that match. And I understand even the second half, yes. there was no shot on target. Mm -hmm. And that is when I think uh, the coach brought in a Soma, who man marked uh, Wadri. Wadri, he didn't have a room to play when Soma came into that match. Yes. So it's unfortunate Leopard lost, but it was a happy day for one man called the Kasambungo because mm -hmm. he proved a point to F. Leopard. F. Leopard uh, parted ways with them some time back, and now he met them and he inflicted more pain on F. Leopard, who are actually trying to, uh, they are blowing hot and cold at the moment when they should be grinding out results at this particular time so that we can consider them, them maybe as a, a serious title contenders. But once you draw points against Bandari, then you need to, to ask yourself a lot of questions. What are we not doing right? Definitely, these players were on a go slow prior to this match. But if you are on a go slow and you are going to cost, actually they went via flight, I think they should have at least tried to put more effort to at least get even a draw, that could have been something to smile for for the new coach. But since they threw away, the, I can say actually they threw away that game because there was no that energy that we always know about F. Leopards. Yes, uh, Cedric, before this tie, I remember that was on Wednesday, we were having a conversation and uh, I told you what uh, Kasambungo had said about meeting FC Leopards. And he said that uh, at the Mbaraki Stadium, it's going to be fireworks. And he's going to make sure that he comes out with a win against FC. And he lived to his word. Any coach around the world will try to outshine their uh, past, as in their previous employers, mm -hmm. and to tell them, as in to send a message back home that uh, even though you did not listen to me mm -hmm. or gave me what I really needed from you, mm -hmm. here I am, and I'm still really soldiering on. Yes. If you want my services, you'll come for them mm -hmm. at a higher pack. Yes. And I think... Uh, that might have been the message that Kasambungo was trying to say it, mm -hmm. but it was too early actually to start concluding on those particular lines. Mm -hmm. To the essence that the results that uh, I saw in the coast, it has been the result that I've been agitating uh, and uh, uh, really describing for mm -hmm. here in this particular show of ours mm -hmm. uh, now and then. To the essence that mm -hmm. FC Leopard has been playing as if it doesn't have a striker. Mm -hmm. At the moment you switch off Rupia, it stops scoring. Yes. And also, those distribution that really uh, build up to a goal, they were not coming. If you go by the goals that FC Leopard has scored, mm -hmm. this, they, it is not a very fluid, convincing goals. There have been a goals anchored, that's now my own opinion, mm -hmm. anchored on flukes, though I know uh, some pundits will disagree with me. Yes. But that has been my point and stand mm -hmm. since the league started, since I started watching this particular team. Yes. I don't, I don't understand as per why F. Leopard 
could lose to a team that uh, Gormahia really thrashed three goals. Mm -hmm. And you played against Gormahia ensuring that you don't really consider or allow any goal past you. Mm -hmm. Then it means either they were so reluctant, mm -hmm. they were not ready even to defend. Okay, if they are not going far to score, why could they have implored their past formula of defending and coming off that, that, that match without even scoring, but a draw of uh, a 0-0? Zero -zero? It's a high time we, not, we, we start exercising professionalism. And here I'm addressing now the players. Mm -hmm. To our essence that I have never seen, live alone even in a soccer fraternity, yes. I have never seen a professional-minded uh, personnel who actually start frustrating their boss on the inception in the office. Mm -hmm. How will you want that boss to start treating you? For instance, I know there were some challenges, but somebody will ask, were those challenges there before? Were, there, were, were, were not there? If, if they were not there, mm -hmm. why is it that they were not really coming to the off before the coach comes in? Why to wait until when the new coach is hired, mm -hmm. on the very day he's starting his game, uh, the, 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 his, his, work, yes. his work in the office, yes. is when now you bring your bad behaviors. It's a kind of, an, if you go and you narrow it down, it is a kind of behavior that, according to my understanding, it has a lead. Mm -hmm. And that lead, to show it's too early, we need to iron out those particular leads. I know people will argue out that give players their dues, give players, but also players are given dues that they are fought hard for. Give us the results, and then the dues will come. You go on, do your job, and then the results will come. Yes, yes, we know. Mr. 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 yes, I yes. think I think let me assist Sedo to make it easy for everyone who is watching us. I think at I FC, you, you, everybody... Uh, Sedo is trying to make it complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just make it easy. Let <laughs> everybody <laughs> take a blame. Yeah? Yes. Whoever need to pay the players, pay the players. And the players exercise professionally, just like Cedric has put it. Trying but to gentlemen, how long are we going to have this conversation Be of, uh, you know... Uh, Everybody should shoulder the burden. Everybody, like, if, if it's your duty to pay the players, pay the players in time. That is why we, we, they ha two of the biggest clubs that we have in the country, Gormaia, they were on a Goslo. Uh, they had to reach out, you know, to well wishes so that they could travel to Zambia to take part in the CAF Confederation Cup where they were knocked out uh, by Napsa. And then, before that, FC traveled to Mombasa on the same day that they were playing and they got there four hours before playing uh, Bandari. Actually, Robi, these embarrassing scenes have become a norm to these two biggest clubs mm -hmm. and it's high time, yeah, the management mm -hmm. should try to make things right for everybody around this club because once you get it right from the top, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure results will start trickling because there's no, there's no time, there's no time for us to sugarcoat these issues. Yes. Let's face them, address them, tackle them one by one, and once they are solved, let the players live up to what they expected. But if the players are being given everything they expect and then they are not delivering, then the pressure will go on to them. Nobody will point a finger to the management, but this time around, the players are the ones who will have to carry the cross. Because in these two scenarios, look at Gormaya, the players underwent a lot of trauma. They underwent through difficult moments to reach in Lusaka, mm -hmm. but they showed at some a lot of character against Napsa until that, uh, that uh, fight, the, the last gas penalty from uh, Emmanuel May May Mayuka. Mm -hmm. But look at F. Lopards, the players, yeah, the management somehow tried to bring something onto them, but now the players are not playing for that badge. My friends, it takes time for you to wear that jersey. Once you wear that jersey, let people remember the name at the back. They'll not remember your face. Let them remember that name at the back. But if you're not giving your best when you wear maybe the green jersey or rather the blue jersey, mm -hmm. yeah, time will come, you'll live, you'll live to regret. Cedric, Ruby, well, we... how did we get here that we have to you know, be contented with this uh, sort of uh, situation? Ruby, it has been hard to come, mm -hmm. and uh, if you go, if you do your simple mathematics, you'll also realize that it's hard to run a club with only 60 million uh, Kenya shillings mm -hmm. in a season. Mm -hmm. But again, that is, should it be an excuse. I think it's high time also the management, they start to actually collect whatever that they have in their basket, mm -hmm. share out holistically, and I mean holistically between, among the player and even there because they need also to pay themselves, mm -hmm. and ensure that when it reaches at a certain, the, Communication also is the fact in this particular. Make sure that you communicate so that if you communicate to the end, even the player will know that, okay, 
we have actually shared this cake and we have run out of this particular cake. Now we yes. should be out to look for another avenue mm -hmm. of acting. And also, we need structures. Structure to the essence that we have our marketing team. We have seen even in Europe, actually, clubs marketing, even to their uh, uh, jazz leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, some clubs are going to the partnership with the hotel. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, I don't understand why F. Slopard would travel to Tiki, mm -hmm. come back to Nairobi. Tiki Nundani, that yes. is the title. Yes. yes, come back to Nairobi, mm -hmm. and again book a flight back to Mumbai. That's a wastage of, of resources, resources if you ask me. Because mm -hmm. a, a, a good ideal situation would have been now that they were in Tiki, mm -hmm. they will have continued negotiating for those money that they were anticipating while they are there. Mm -hmm. They remain there. Yes. When that money comes, that money would have sorted out other bills, would have even paid the player, even moral boost, and even the fatigue that comes from, with the player traveling back to Nairobi and again back to, to, to and fro back to Mombasa mm -hmm. would have not come. And I think it's not necessarily tying that, okay, Player also need to bring in some level of professionalism, as Rogers has said. Yes. I will take you back to the FC Leopard of 1987. Mm -hmm. FC Leopard of 1988 up to 90. Mm -hmm. It's a team that actually, if you try to align the two, uh, paint the two scenarios, it's a team that was earning peanuts. And it's a team that was full of professionals, mm -hmm. not necessarily soccer professionals, mm -hmm. but also we had the technocrats in those particular team mm -hmm. who are now currently doubling up as doctors. Mm -hmm. These are technocrats who will leave their offices, mm -hmm. go trade for us, and leave us happy in yes. the pitch. I was very young in 1990s when I was following the likes of Mick Weche. Mm -hmm. I think where they are watching us, they might. But I would love to watch that team under the real names of Mick Weche, Wilbur for mm -hmm. play simply because at the moment you'll hear the word Wilbur for Smulamba in FC Leopard, mm -hmm. you would, before even the match started, start thinking of, Goals, goals, goals. Mm -hmm. Currently, if somebody tells you in FC Leopard who will score for you, if yes. Rupia is not in, yes. and even if Rupia is tightly marked, yes. no one. Actually, in addition to what uh, Cedric, Cedric has said, let's yes, just yes. break down FC and Gormazia issues to, tonight. Mm -hmm. I think at FC Leopards, I can remember the legs of Miki Weche, the legs of Mulamba, mm -hmm. but yeah, I never watched them. Mm -hmm. Those are the names I can remember. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, which name will you remember at FC Leopard? It is difficult for any fan to single out that name because of how things are panning out at that club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. We have issues, yeah? Sometimes you have issues, but you have to think at the bigger picture. Remember, it has taken FC years more than, I think, 22 years mm -hmm. since they last won this title. For this, for this current generation, this current crop of players, they have a honor. They have a chance to write history. People will remember them if by chance they managed to end that long title drought this year. Mm -hmm. Now, gentlemen, of course, uh, we digressed a bit into the management issue, but let's listen in to what uh, uh, Bandari coach, uh, that is Andre Kasambungo, had to say after collecting three points uh, from his former employer, that is FC Leopards at uh, the Mbaraki Stadium. Of course, we want to listen to what uh, Coach Andre Kasambungo had to say about uh, 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 Bandari rather getting uh, three points uh, from uh, AFC Leopards uh, in uh, Mombasa. Nashukuru mwenyezi mungu kwa menweze cha kufungwa FC leo. Juu, ngikuwa hibu tufungwa na FC na mimi ni toka huko. Lakini, vijana na washukuru kwa ni walifight sana, walifanya kazi nzuri na inabidi tuendelee hivyo sana sana tukicheza nyumbani lazima tuwe na na nguvu za ku za kufanya vizuri zaidi hapa tumepoteza pointi nyingi sana ukiwa na mtu wa kwanza kama na kushinda pointi kumi ni nyingi sana na unataka kuwa katika hali timu zenyewe ziko bora Kenya inabidi ufunge game zenyewe ziko karibu zote na ujaribu kusogelea wengine Andre Kasambungo speaking after Bandari got a 2-1 win against FC Leopards now on the other side FC Leopards tactician that is Patrick Osims said that uh, he was happy with the way the boys managed the game after going down 2-0 uh, after eight minutes in that game and managed to get a goal. But he will be working more to ensure that the, that, that uh, does not ha happen going forward. So, gentlemen, of course, uh, as we wait for that, uh, what do you make of Andre Kasambunga? I know we've spoken about uh, 
uh, FC for, for, for a, a bigger chunk of, uh, of the show. But what do you make of how Kasambungo is uh, transforming Bandari? Eshtemi. I give credit where it's due. I think since his arrival, there's something, there's something that trying to, he's trying to do at the Dockers. Remember, mm -hmm. he has uh, tried to get some crucial wins. And uh, right now, him coming against the Lopards is a team. He, he came knowing the type of players he's going to face. Because I think uh, three quarters of the F -slope of players at F Lopards were once managed by this Kasabungo. So he's a person who knows how to handle the upcoming players, more so young players, and giving them chance to, de to express themselves. And I'm happy to see he has actually tried to see or rather realize that talent in the William Wadri, the Ugandan uh, dancing rasta, mm -hmm. because from a midfielder to a scoring player, that is a huge, huge, huge plus for, for Kasambungo, because it is now Wadri who is doing the job for Bandari. It's either he is involved in, in, in the goals, either providing the assist directly, or he's the man who shakes that net. So I think Wadri, Wadri is the man who, whom, who will, give, uh, will give most of the, of the FKFPL teams a lot of trouble whenever they, they, they meet uh, Bandari. Of course, he was on the double in that tie. So, Cedric, let's now listen into what uh, Patrick Olsen's had to say before you give uh, your thoughts on uh, his views. It's the first game uh, I will say I'm coaching here. I saw, I saw the, the derby Gormaya uh, against uh, FC Leopard uh, two weeks ago. Tactically, it was very poor. It was very, very, very poor. So that's why also we need to, to, to work a lot with my players because uh, it's a lot of uh, weaknesses, especially tactically. Uh, but but uh, they, are, they are there to, to, to learn, you know. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a disappointment to begin with a, with a defeat, of course. But, uh, you know, games are coming every, every four days. Now uh, we just need to go back to, Mumba, to, to uh, Nairobi sorry, and uh, to, to, to be ready for the game on, on Wednesday. Of course, uh, FC Leopards coach uh, Patrick Osim is speaking right there, saying that uh, his boys are not uh, technically to the level that he wants uh, them uh, to be. Cedric? To me, is uh, going by his uh, vocal, he's a kind of a coach who, ca who has a command, mm -hmm. and he also uh, has banked on a certain philosophy mm -hmm. that he doesn't really actually want to come out and tell us what is this philosophy. And I think going by what he has just said, he was present when the FC Leopard was playing a derby, mm -hmm. and he watched that derby with a keen eye, mm -hmm. which he picked out some uh, tactical uh, objections that he needed actually to work on. Mm -hmm. And I think moving forward, this was now his second game to watch, mm -hmm. not necessarily to command, second and first to command. But then again, he has picked up some areas that he needs to be working on. I think he needs to implement that command. If we go back by his history, where he's coming from, that is Simba. Is a kind of a player who I think will bring back what FC Leopard lads that really want to see. And by that, those kind of sex soccer that FC Leopard has been missing, has, has been missing for the last 22 years mm -hmm. is what we are looking for. Not necessarily beauty, but beauty with goals. Beauty with goals that will result to a trophy. And I think he's very uh, much aware that this is what fans are looking for. This is what he's tasked, uh, tasked to do. And I, when he's trying to assemble the team, I think the management need to give him all the power that he deserves. And by this I mean the power to assemble a team, the power to scout, the power even to suck where necessary. And by so means, Lisa, like what we are trying to dissect with my uh, uh, friend Rogers here. Yes. If a player does a mistake, the <laughs> world over we have seen the likes of even uh, uh, Klopp, uh, Klopp and... Uh, uh, Mourinho. Mourinho doing. Yes. If a player does a mistake, yes. it doesn't matter which kind of a player it is. Yes. We have FC has reach in a squad that can really bring in somebody and fill up that particular number. Mm -hmm. There is no one in that particular team that has got a right to pocket a certain number throughout the season. Mm -hmm. You can as well play if you don't play to the coach's philosophy. You go back and start warming the bench. Yes. And if you continue with your bad, bad behavior, which results to bad attitude, you can as well as be relegated to go and play in under 23. What FC Leopard is looking for is results. We are looking for trophy. That drought that this team has been facing for those long years is what fans doesn't want. And I think if you go even by social media, what fans are talking about, 
fans are looking forward to see FC Leopard actually celebrating at the end of the season, mm -hmm. which I cannot really task up the coach because the coach, it's so hard for coach to bring as in to come in at the, at the, at, at the beginning of the season yes. and give such a result. And if that is to have to come, yes. I think we'll have to celebrate the coach. But if he doesn't come, then he needs to be given that particular mandate that he requires to bring back the glory that this team has lost. Bringing back the glory that this team has lost. Of course, uh, FC Leopards are losing to Bandari 3, uh, rather 2-1 was the final score. Gentlemen, let's move on to the other results from uh, the weekend. Nairobi City Stars got a 2-1 win against Zoo Kericho. Zoo is yet to win a tie so far in the FKF Premier League. They have only two points, and these are from two draws that they've had this season. Eshtemi, what's not happening in Kericho? A sorry state of affair. Mm -hmm. That's not a type of team mm -hmm. anybody would love to see it struggle yes. and where it is on the table right now. Because uh, just like Nzoya, Western Steamer, Zoo is one of the teams that has produced some of the best players we are seeing in the, in the, the FKL Premier League. And it will be very sad to see them being relegated at the end of the season. But mm -hmm. they have a chance now to turn around the results. I think they're playing well, mm -hmm. but now they're not finding the what is required in the final third, putting the ball behind the net. That mm -hmm. is actually what is trying to trouble them. Mm -hmm. But even also looking at the type of goals they are conceding, there's some of laps of concentration, something mm -hmm. that the coach, uh, Haman Isweha, need to work on. Because if he doesn't work on those areas, definitely he will lose his job. Mm -hmm. And I believe the owner of the club, that is Ken, uh, Ken Ocheng, is somebody who is, trying to tr is thinking day in, day out, what is the next step we should take maybe to ensure that uh, he stabilizes the sinking ship at, at, at uh, Zoo. Mm -hmm. But having said that, uh, I think uh, they have quality players in Benada Wanguche. They have Collins Neto. Those are experienced players. Though they have been uh, trained to be cemented around with inexperienced players, the young players who have not played the FKFP Premier League in the past. Mm -hmm. But now matters are at a crucial place whereby nobody need to take a chance at zoo yes. because looking at how they played against uh, city stars yes. i think sometimes football is all about luck mm -hmm. but when that luck comes on your door and you don't grab it by your hands mm -hmm. definitely then you'll never see that lady lucky again zoo need to take their chances and bury them whether they are playing in Nairobi or they are at home in kericho mm -hmm. they need to make good use of those chances or else one day one time they'll cry one day one time they will cry literally Remember, yes as you are yet to pick a point that is uh steve Ayo's favorite team in the kenya in the football kenya federation premier league uh cedric after eight games finally city stars managed to get a win and this was against uh, zoo city stars just like uh, uh, bidco not necessarily bidco madara united mm -hmm. it's a team that has really been playing good soccer mm -hmm. And the, fortunate, the unfortunate situation that has really been uh, b b b b b as in bolstering them at the pitch yes. has really been amounted to them possessing a lot, if you, if you ask me. Because mm -hmm. they have, the, as in many they of have the, quality in their side. Many, many, many of the creative players. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. We're talking about the likes of Anthony Kimani. Mm -hmm. These are the players, when they start dancing with the ball, we like to watch them doing those, the magic uh, at, at, at the middle of the pitch. Yes. But then again, I was so happy to see even the youngster, the likes of uh, Kevin Okumu, mm -hmm. running with that particular, doing a very nice run and scoring at a very tight, a tighter angle. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of balls that I would like to see some of the so celebrated as big teams in this league doing. Yes. But it's now coming from the team that are no longer celebrated. They don't even have followers. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, let me cut you short sco on that. Scoring from a tight angle. <laughs> let me cut you short said on that. Because this Okumu... Kevin Okumi was actually at uh, Wazito. Mm -hmm. yeah? yes. He made just a return at uh, City Stars a few Stars. weeks ago. Yes. And actually on his return, mm -hmm. on loan, he scores a wonder goal and then he gives an assist. Continue, Cedric. Yeah, you see, when you play in a team that really uh, trickle passes, mm -hmm. a team that uh, try to build a formula towards mm -hmm. any goal, we don't want to see goals that come with a fluke. Yes. We need to see goals that has a formula. Mm -hmm. If a team actually, the players are on hold of the ball, you can see them protecting the ball and trying to distribute those passes that are actually borrowed from somewhere. Yes. Some of these players, when they are playing actually, when you are sitting next to them, you realize they're actually following some of the professional matches. And when they are following, they need to have some scribble somewhere, picking notes. 
Seeing how City Star has been playing, I will tell you for free, the likes of Maloba, the likes of Okumu, the likes of Anthony Kimani, mm -hmm. uh, and then back there being supported by their backline of Salim Abdallah. Mm -hmm. They are really doing a good job. It's only that the luck has not been coming. Mm -hmm. But I think their coach has given them what I've been talking about, about these other teams. Yes. Being on front of goal, just take up your position, get composed, yes. try to be focused enough, and hit the target. Here the point is to hit the target, not to misfire, yes. not just to give out balls. Distribute balls with the purposes. When you are distributing balls, lay, make sure that all your flanks are working and they are bringing in balls to the center. Yes. When the flanks start bringing in ball at the center, always your natural number nine will hit these balls. Mm -hmm. We don't know where they will be hitting them, but that's now what we call creating chances. Mm -hmm. Out of five, six, seven chances, you realize that you can even score one or two. And this is what Sister has started doing. Them hitting Kericho, you really, you might think that Kericho were not really playing, but equally, Kericho were that a good team. Mm -hmm. A good team being played against the City Stars who really knew what they were doing, who played with the purpose, that's why they ended up losing. And I think it is their time, it is their time to start earmarking their space in, EP, in, in, in FKFPL. It might not be their chance actually to win, but they need actually to give us the value that they deserve to be here. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, that is Nairobi City Stars getting a 2-1 win against uh, Zoo Kericho. Let's uh, take a look at the other results. Uh, and we had uh, Olinzi Stars getting a 2-0 win against uh, Sofa Paka, a tie that, uh, tie that was played at uh, the Green Stadium in Kericho. Ishtemi, what's not happening uh, at uh, Batoto Bamung? Another team that is not living up to the bailing. Mm -hmm. Very sad, very disappointing. Because uh, I think they knew very well they are going to play a solid Ulinzi team that mm -hmm. has also not been scoring a lot of goals, but they have been grinding out those required results. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they ended conceding two goals in the second half in a span of less than 15 minutes or so, and that was the end of, of Badoto Bamungu. Remember, Badoto Bamungu has made a lot of good acquisition in the, in, the, in the last transfer window. They have brought in uh, Timo Tieno, they have brought in uh, the lake of Florence Juma. Those are quality players, but at the moment, things are not working out. They are blowing hot and cold each and every match. Mm -hmm. When they meet a lower table team, they'll get the results. But when they meet a team of their quality, it's difficult, they struggle. Keno Diambo has a lot of, of, a lot of work to do with, uh, with Sofapaka, if indeed, they are to contest for the title. But if they continue this hot and cold uh, criteria, then we'll forget about Sofapako. It may be considered they may be just like a top 10 team because they are not, they'll not be giving the other teams a run for their money in, 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 in the race for the title. Mm -hmm. Now, Cedric, briefly, Bitco United got a 2-1 win against Madara United. This is a tie that was played at the Kasarani Stadium. And uh, in doing so, uh, it means that uh, still Madara United uh, battling relegation. It's unfortunate that Madare uh, happened to lose in an easier manner mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't really uh, uh, quite encourage to a team of Ma Madare magnitude. Mm -hmm. Having watched that particular game, okay, it was a game that you could sit down and uh, submit your 90 minutes actually following how the ball was really being distributed. And mm -hmm. I remember at some points I told you if you yes. could have some time to come down and watch how those lads were playing. It was an, a game of end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. And I would, li I would love how those boys actually were really grisping those, uh, those balls, mm -hmm. how they were utilizing the pitch, mm -hmm. how they were distributing the balls, and how they were connecting between all the departments of the pitch. Mm -hmm. The defense communication, the midfield communication, the forward lines, all those kind of departments were really working on the both ends. And at the, at, 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 at the moment, I loved the Madare first goal. And uh, at that particular time, I thought that Madare maybe will go ahead and give uh, uh, Bidco a run of their money. Because mm -hmm. Tyson Otieno picked that particular ball, mm -hmm. got the composure that I have been talking about, mm -hmm. made a run with that particular ball. He distributed that, 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 that ball to Kinyanju in a very nice, in a nice way, mm -hmm. who brought again back to him. Mm -hmm. And at the, at, at, at the end, he ended up scoring. Mm. It is a move that you can really place it in African kind of soccer, mm. maybe in South Africa and Egypt. Mm. But if you follow it clearly, you realize it's a move that can actually be placed to Europe. Mm. A move that started from the midfield, mm -hmm. distributed very well, utilized mm. the pitch, and later on resulted to a goal. Mm. It's only a matter of time Madara United to start uh, sealing up the mistake that they have been making that makes them lose yes. and start registering results. Mm -hmm. Eshtemi, briefly, this loss, what does it mean to Madare and how important is it to Bidco? 
briefly. Big, big win for Bitco. Mm -hmm. I think Wahuli is doing a good job at Bitco. Yes. But unfortunately for Salim Ali and his boys, that was not the type of result any Madari fan would have loved to see. Mm -hmm. Actually, they conceded very silly goals. Look at the first goal they conceded. Mm -hmm. Poor goalkeeping. Where's Job? Where's Where's Job Ocheng? Mm. He was not in the best position. He allowed uh, Gichumu to get the, the the glory for nothing. Mm -hmm. Though it was a powerful header, yes, but he could have saved that that header. The second goal, horrendous. Communication. Talk with your defender. Once he gives you a back pass, be in a good position and then clear it. More so, the defender, most, in most occasions, defenders, look at the position of your goalkeepers. Don't try to give that ball directly at the goal. Try at least to keep it off target so mm -hmm. that by chance, if he misses it, then it can end up being a goal kick mm -hmm. or a, 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 a corner. Sorry. Yes. Now, gentlemen, of course, we are, we are almost winding up. So in uh, 30 seconds... Tasca got a 4-1 win against uh, Posta Rangers. This is a tie that was played last week on Thursday. Cedric, Tasca are running away with this. They are defining this league, mm -hmm. and I think it's their moment, though too early, because they have only played the 12th match out of possible 36. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a kind of a team that uh, if, manage, if manages well their win, they might end up running, uh, running away with this uh, particular league. Mm -hmm. Eshtemi, what do you make of... Uh, what we've seen so far from uh, Tasca. That's a well-oiled team, mm -hmm. a character of a champion. Yes. They have what it takes to lift the title this season, but it's not it. It's too early to start celebrating. Let them wait until the lady lucky sings, mm -hmm. the fat lady sings, that's when maybe they can start celebrating. Waiting until that uh, is uh, lady lucky sings. Of course, we do have fixtures in the FKFPL. Uh, uh, that is uh, March week 13. Uh, tomorrow, that is on Tuesday, with uh, Bandari taking on Vihiga in Mombasa, and then Tasca will be uh, handling Zoya in uh, Nairobi. On Wednesday, Western Steamer host City Stars. Zuke Richo will be in action against Kakamega Homeboys. FC Leopards take on Ulinzi, while Madari United host Wazito as Sofa Paka battles KCB. Those are some of the matches that we'll be taking a look at in March week 13. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for your time. That is uh, Cedric Musumba and Rogers Ishtemi for giving us uh, your insights on what you thought about uh, March week 12 of the FKF PL Review Show. That is where we call it a night. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. My name is Robinson Okenye. We'll be seeing you next week on Monday from 10.30 to 11.30 as we take stock of March week 13 and 14.